So we're back with Chairdeep, and uh, I'm David, and we're talking about CloudStack and some of the network features. Uh, one of the things that when I first started playing with CloudStack that uh, fascinated me was this idea of offering up a, a, uh, a load balancing service. Um, so uh, I, I guess I just let the cat out of the bag, and, and CloudStack offers a load balancing service. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, to, uh, so there's two flavors of load balancing service. One is that comes with advanced virtual mm -hmm. uh, networking features, and one that comes with the basic. Uh, let's talk about the first one, because that's been around the code base for the longest. So it, it's part of the virtual garden. Mm -hmm. We bundle the HA proxy, which is a very um, fast and scalable load balancer. And what we do is that we have a few uh, API calls, which you can configure the load balancer. Mm -hmm. And then we, we make calls out of the uh, THA proxy to kind of reconfigure it when mm -hmm. we make changes. Uh, what we find that it's extremely performant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on on a KVM system, for example, I benchmarked a very small router at you know, 5,000 requests per second. Wow. So um, it's it's nice, it's very functional, mm -hmm. and it gives you a TCP level board load balancing and a little bit of HTTP as well. So, so effectively, the end user can decide that they want a load balancer. They can uh, provision it themselves, turn it on. They they can configure the load balancer. That's right. What they can do is that typically a load balancer has a virtual IP, right? And load balancers to a bunch of backend IP. Sure. So you you go to the UI and then with a few clicks you say, well, this is the public IP I want to be load balanced. Mm -hmm. Which port do you want to be load balanced? And then you choose the backend VMs, which will be load balanced against. Um, and so you can even uh, you can even tell it what type of uh, load balancing uh, scheme to use. Uh, That's right. So once you you can select the, the protocol, which is TCP, mm -hmm. and then once you select TCP, you can select the port. If it's eighty, uh, which is eighty or four four three, we have zero bits kind of HTTP. So we mm -hmm. make a few more tweaks in the, in the back end to tell the chip property that it's HTTP. Um, and then you can also choose the uh, the how it balances against the backend, so it can be round robin, it can be uh, least loaded, or it can be source IP. Right. With source IP, it gives you a little bit of stickiness, so right. that you know if somebody is using shopping cart, uh, you know they're not going to get redirected to a different backend right. uh, web server every time and then lose their state. Mm -hmm. um, but source IP is the, currently the, the best way to do stickiness to it. Mm -hmm. So, so you you said that that's been around the longest, and, and uh, so tell me about the other kind of load balancing that we have. So, elastic load balancing is, is the same uh, virtual router with HA proxy, but it's now offered on the on the basic network. Mm -hmm. um, so, what you do is that every time somebody come and calls the API to create a load balance, so we spin up one. If if there's no, if we spin one, uh, spin up one virtual router. Mm -hmm. With the sole purpose of doing load balancing, and, and so that's per account, or is that uh, is that it's, per zone? It's it's per IP. Okay, but you can also uh, change it so that uh, you can have multiple IPs on the same load balancer. Okay, so but by default, it's every time you want an address to be load balanced. That's right. It's, it's going to spin up a new load balancer right. for you. Okay, and so so what's some of the difference uh, with? I mean, obviously, you don't have the the virtual router that you do with with advanced networking, but what, what's different about uh, about the elastic loop balancer? The the main difference is that with uh, with the advanced uh, virtual, you have the two interfaces: you have the public mm -hmm. uh, interface and then the guest interface, or the, the private interface. And so you're taking traffic from the from the public and then load balancing on, on the guest network. Right. Uh, with the uh, elastic load balance, uh, the way we designed it is that the two networks are the same. Mm -hmm. So you get traffic on on the guest network and you balance against the guest network. So, so, you, so there's two interfaces there. There's only one interface, so it kind of hairpins on, okay. on, on the same uh, eight zero interface. Interesting. And and uh, how is that? Uh, how is that as far as scalability? Do you run, able to run the same? Type of uh, load that you are with the absolutely direct. because it's the same you know HA proxy you know, right. on the same software absolutely and same configuration options even same though. configuration options that's that's all that's outstanding so even the folks that that typically were denied some of those services because they chose a basic network right. and, and needed a really large network they can still take advantage of 
of some of the load balancing features. That's right. Now, I know that we also uh, we also support some hardware load balancing. Can you tell us about that? That's right. Just like in the firewall, we support the external, like in Juniper SRX, we can support an F5 or an X scaler mm -hmm. as the external uh, load balancer. So in, this is uh, in, the ex in the advanced version only today. Mm -hmm. No reason why we can't extend it to the basic also. So, so you can effectively, you can still allow a person to, that's an end user who typically wouldn't have admin access to your load balancer to, to provision load balancing services off of it? That's right. So what you would do is that if, if it's, for example, the F5, uh, you would grab a virtual IP for the F5. Mm -hmm. and the, actually, there's two modes for the F5, actually. One is, do you want the F5 to be protected by a, load, by a firewall, mm -hmm. or do you trust the F5 to be, you know, robust and resilient enough to protect itself? Mm -hmm. uh, some customers choose to have some, run them side by side, saying that you know I want the full performance of the load of the, of the load balance, so I don't want the firewall in between. Sure. And some of them choose to run the firewall behind mm -hmm. or in line with the uh, with the load balance. Sorry, the load balance or behind the firewall. firewall. Okay. And so what do we, we do is we just grab a uh, VIP for that uh, for the load balancer, and then everything else works as before. Wow! So that's a that's a lot of power basically handed out and delegated. Oh, I, oh yes, absolutely. I was just looking at some uh, customer logs the other day, and you know, a single one of their single customers had more like eighty petabyte, eighty terabytes of traffic in two weeks. So. That's the kind of uh, traffic people are seeing already. That, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, well, I appreciate you uh, coming and talking to us about uh, some of the some of those uh, load balancing features. You're welcome.